United States Marshals, open up. We're looking for Edward Snowden. These aren't the drones you're looking for. These aren't the drones I'm looking for? No, but we're about to discuss all the crazy things at CES. Do you want to come and join us? I would love that. This is the Nexus Special, episode 43, CES 2016, on Sunday, January 10th, 2016. This Nexus Special is hosted by Ian R. Buck, Matthew Petchel, and Ryan Rampersad. This Nexus Special has show notes at thenexus.tv slash ns43. Yay, we found a friend. Wow, that's great. In such an unlikely place. Man, I love having U.S. Marshals on the show. <laughs> I like a man in uniform. I know you do. <laughs> I'm always in uniform. That's what they all say. Well, so this is, uh, what, uh, what year is this? This is 2016. I think so. This CES is the first one I've recorded here in a while. I did not do 2015 CES. I wonder why not. Uh, various reasons, um, mostly borderline um, disenfranchisement with Qualcomm. Well, hopefully they can bring it this year. Uh, I don't think they did, but we'll talk about it. Yeah, we will. So, um, what, do you want to like start maybe with like all the major keynotes and stuff? That would make sense because that's the highlights usually. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. So, so uh, first, I think we should start with AMD. Okay. Because they didn't show anything at all. <laughs> they just talked about stuff. And so AMD. At, at CES, although they didn't really have a big keynote, they were there, and they they talked about their next architecture, which is called Polaris. And now, this was the first time that they revealed that name? Then we knew they were working on the next thing, but we didn't know about the name before. Okay. So this is this is the new thing. This is going to be uh, their uh, GPU architecture, not a processor thing. We know their processor lineup is coming to fruition of their revision. Mm-hmm. That's Zen. We don't know when it's coming. It's just coming. But Polaris is going to be new on 14 nanometers. It's going to have a bunch of new features for hardware like HDMI 2, uh, DisplayPort 1.3, 4K, H.265 encode and decode. So it's all going to be native and super fast. Uh, They are saying that it's going to be a a historic leap in performance per watt. Which is exactly what AMD needs. Which is exactly what they need, considering most of their cards run extremely hot for about the same performance as an equivalent NVIDIA, NVIDIA card mm-hmm. with 50 to 100 watts less TDP. So they're saying uh, they have a card that's equivalent in power to a 950 okay. NVIDIA card, but it uses 50 less watts. Hmm. And so, and that and that 950 uses 100, so it's around 50 watts, which is pretty good. Yeah, pretty impressive. It's a good deal. So we'll see what that looks like in 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 the end. Any price points yet? No, they, they did not want to really disclose pretty much anything. They're saying that the consumer cards are going to be available in mid-16, lower-end cards for mobile devices or maybe, you know, all-in-one PCs might be available earlier. But it's kind of concerning. You would expect if they were going to have these things, they would have already been in products at CES. Right. In this case, when we say mobile devices, do we mean laptops? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, make it sure. Because they're not, they're, yeah, they're not crazy like NVIDIA and, and put graphics card architectures in their mobile chips. Well, NVIDIA is so crazy. They put graphics card architectures in their cars. So let's yeah. talk about NVIDIA. <laughs> so NVIDIA has introduced their second generation smart car product, which is for some reason called the PX2. Last year's was called the DX. Yes. I don't it, know why. I, it makes perfect sense to me. Sure. Does it? No. Oh, okay. Roll with it. Cars roll. Uh, rolled with it. I like that one. <laughs> so, so can, what can you tell me about this horrible thing? Well, it is using two custom, sort of custom, system on a chips, um, as opposed to last year's two X1s, uh, and dual GPUs. It rivals the computing power of, a hun- wait, 150 MacBook Pros, allegedly. Allegedly. Wait, what? Yeah, so on stage, the guy walks up and said, yes, this thing is about as fast as 150 MacBook Pros. And he says it with a straight face, and we all just glare at him like, we know you don't mean that. Yeah, that would be crazy. So, in a sense, it's probably false because, you know, they're they're probably, you know, like peak performance in some ideal condition or something. And it's probably the smaller 13-inch MacBook Pro. Uh. <laughs> so they can, you know, multiply the number up by having more. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's how speed should work. What if they're talking about the MacBook Pros, like the original... Oh, the 17-inch 17, 17 one? However long ago yeah. it was, yeah. 
I don't know. Uh, so they are they are saying that this um, new car thing is super fast. It has an enormous amount of computing power. It is liquid cooled because it's so big. It has. Um, Where are we going to put it in a car? So they say it's about the size of a lunchbox. I don't know how big a lunchbox okay. is these days. Maybe Matt eats a lot. I have a gigantic lunchbox. Okay, so maybe this thing is gigantic. I don't know. So it's liquid cooled because here's what's in it: two Denver chips. So if you recall, Denver is the code name of the better X1 chip. Okay. From the Nexus Nine. Okay. Okay. I think. I think. And it also has two uh, equivalent Titan-like Pascal cards. So it is. Is this the X1 that was in the Nvidia Android TV thingy? The the there, Shield Android TV. I'm not. Box? I'm not sure what that has in it. All I know is that this is the better one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like the 64-bit one, the real one. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. So it has all of that. You know, it has GPU and CPU performance. But there's so much of it, it needs to be water, liquid cooled, water cooled, probably. <laughs> and that's that's crazy. So now it's a lunchbox, and it has to be cooled inside of your car. So on a hundred degree day, it's going to melt. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I don't, how does that interface with the car? Like, so uh, it would have to be incorporated directly into manufacturing. So there there were no demos really, you know, aside from the ones that they provided, because you know, who who gets pre production units these days. Uh, so let's see here. They're f- featuring the first pa- Pascal architecture usages. Uh, these are on 16 nanometer. It's not really that exciting. I want to know what the heck they're going to be doing with all this power in a car. Right. So uh, we've got eight teraflops of computing power. That's a lot of flops. Yeah. I yeah. mean, my 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 uh, car isn't going to be doing deep searches on binary trees or anything like that like well, i mean if it takes eight teraflops to binary search your tree you've got a messed up tree <laughs> okay so they say this please is don't go- look at my data structures ever. no i won't let anyone so they say this is going to be generally available in q4 which means we won't see products with it until next ces if anybody decides to implement implement it mm-hmm. what do you think this costs to put all that crap okay in a little box? great question so on twitter i asked about that so how much does this cost and so you can Ballpark, basically. So of a Nexus Nine, because that's the Denver chip, mm-hmm. we could say you know maybe the chip's fifty dollars, because okay. you know it's that's probably one of the more expensive components in a in a tablet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if we say that, and there's two of them, that's a hundred dollars, and then we have two Titan class Pascal products, which means it's two thousand dollars plus a hundred dollars, which means it's probably expensive. Yeah. Yes. So if it's so good as Nvidia says, if it's actually as good as the hundred and fifty MacBook Pros. Why isn't everybody just going to get one? Like, why wouldn't I just run everything in my life with it? Because it's way too expensive for, for no reason. But you can put it in a car that can be destroyed at any time when you're on the road <laughs> or parked outside your rear house. And, and so in the presentation, they also show all of their cool software that goes along with it. But of course, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, the chip is doing all this stuff and the software can make all these pretty presentations and it knows exactly by our accelerated learning algorithms what a person is and what a street post is and i i guess that's cool but it's not really the hardware doing it it's the software you actually had to code in there well that's that's how computers work yeah but they're making a big deal about how the hardware's so revolutionary but it's not it's really the software but mm. they're not doing the software to do it's justice a- always been hard to have software sound cool though i mean i wouldn't have put so much pressure towards this hardware that by the time it comes out it'll be old um, that's why you future-proof it in a lunchbox? That's a revolutionary concept. That is kind of revolutionary. Okay, so speaking of revolutionary, let's talk about Huawei. Ooh, who are they? So Huawei makes phones. They also make uh, Nexus devices occasionally. Mm-hmm. And uh, they also make some watches and some other products. Uh, today, and by today I mean during CES, uh, you know, right before the raid, they decided to release a new Nexus 6. Yep. So this is... a Obviously, a phone that we all already knew about and could purchase, but you couldn't purchase this one before. It's because because it's gold. Gold. Does I don't that really know. look gold to you. Well, yeah. Wait, uh, wait. Yeah, when we say gold, I assume we just mean the color gold, right? Not the material gold. No, it's not made out of gold. It just yeah. looks gold. Got that? That's what I yeah. thought. Yeah. Yeah. So based on on pictures I've seen and reports, most people say that it's it's a very light hint of gold. It looks it, gray to me. Yeah, it's 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 not perceptible. 
in now, most cases. Does it, is, is it just a color and it doesn't cost any more or less than the rest of the colors? I don't know if they said. They just said it's going to be available soon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't cost any more because it's such a light hint and the gold uh, iPhone doesn't cost additional. Yeah. So. I mean, this isn't the first time that they've suddenly come out with a new colored Nexus no, not, phone after the fact. They, no, They no, had no. the red Nexus uh, 5 that came out on Valentine's got, Day. Should have gotten another one of those. <laughs> I always thought it was funny because I named my Nexus 5 red. Oh. And then how do you three, name, mo- how do you three name months Nexus later. Phone? Well, I mean, like, for me, oh, I okay. call it red. Uh, and also in, like, Android Device yeah, yeah. Manager, I named it. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they also decided to show off some opulent watches. So they, this is their word, opulent, opulent. That's, that's so they word. call these watches elegant and dual. They're both running Android Wear. Uh, these are both using all the same features from the Huawei watch that was released earlier this year. I don't know what it was called, but it, you know, it's, or last year, I guess. It, it's, it's, it's really nice, but these are pretty expensive. I noticed that they have a round watch face yep. without a flat tire. Yes, and that's it's exactly like the other Huawei watch that had already come out. These are just mm-hmm. um, enhanced with all the jewelry and fanciness opulence. Now, five hundred dollars and six hundred dollars. Yeah, so they're kind of expensive, and and they are featuring a new feature though. They they are touting the first on watch calling, so you, you can. Answer your calls on your watch now if you really want to. You could look like one of those uh, Secret Service agents, you know, talking to the Or a wrist. U.S. Marshal. There you go. Yeah, I think I think the U.S. Marshal approach is a good way to do it with your six hundred dollar jeweled watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I will fit into any consumer electronics show. Honestly, though, like six hundred dollars is not bad for a really fancy looking watch that has some nice features that's true but now what about when this can't run any android wear thing in a year yeah but 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 uh, what i'm saying is it's nowhere near the level of like the apple watch where it's you know however many thousand dollars for the really fancy ones that's going to become obsolete next year yeah or this year yeah exactly yeah Yeah, it's it's that is pretty rough uh, they also came out with their new flagship which is interesting so i think of among all the vendors here this is the only phone vendor that came out with a real fag- flagship product as a phone, and uh, it's kind of interesting. So this is the Mate 8, 5.5-inch uh, screen, Gorilla Glass 4. It's not using Snapdragon, so it probably won't work. So it's using a Kirin 950 8-core processor. We don't know what configuration that is, so... I've never... What what processor is this? What company is that? I've so, never so heard of them. Huawei makes its own processors. Oh, really? Yep. And um, the general problem with these processors, their performance might be okay, but the general problem that people don't like is that because most people don't have them, most developers can't test apps on mm. them. So if they're doing any intensive stuff, their apps are generally broken or sub-optimized. Right, because when you buy a game for Android, it has different versions of the It the- can binary for yeah. like nvidia systems versus snapdragon right. systems yeah so and because it's not very popular yet it's generally not optimized and the other problem with it is all of the rom people so you know the the, the root people the mm-hmm. people who put different roms they say that the source code drivers for these processors are generally unavailable forever right and um that makes people angry so kieran is not a great processor to have although it's super fast uh, it also has a great, great new Sony uh, camera module, 16 megapixels, and IMX 298, something like that. Cool. It's pretty good. Uh, they also have a 4,000 mAh battery, fingerprint sensor. And of course, it's going to cost $650 if it ever comes to the U.S. Yeah. But it's a flagship, so why wouldn't it? Oh, wait, because it's Huawei. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, I mean, you would expect that since they have the Nexus 6P, that that would be kind of their springing board for, hey, everybody, you've heard of us now. Buy one now. Here we are. Yeah. And, and it doesn't really cost that much more. You know, if you were buying a mid-level Nexus 6, you could buy this instead. Because that would cost mm. about the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know what the what their plan with rollout here is. It's a nice phone, though. looks really nice. It's very thin. It's gold. It, 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 real gold. Much more gold than the Nexus yeah. 6. Yeah. Mm-hmm. one. So, uh, LG, uh, they weren't as interesting. I think we, we ran out of all the interesting stuff. So, LG, hmm. what do you got? Well, in their keynote, at least, uh, they showed off some car stuff and some TVs, which is, you know, because CES is the TV show, right? 
So we've got it, there's LG Signature Branding, um, among other things, which is OLED TVs. And um, this one in particular is two and a half millimeters with Dolby Vision HDR Plus, providing more contrast to fight light pollution. Yeah, so on stage, the guy's like, you know, most of our viewers are suffering with light pollution. And I, I'm i not going to drive two hours out of the city to watch TV. <laughs> Um, so Dolby Vision, I think, is a weird branding because mm-hmm. Dolby is usually associated with audio, right? Right. Yes. And so they're calling Dolby Vision their um, enhanced contrast algorithm or thing. I don't know. Um, it's a really nice TV. Everybody seems to really like it. OLED is great. Mm-hmm. It's going to still be absurdly expensive. I don't think this particular unit has a price, but not that I've seen. Yeah. But it is super nice. Now, in addition to Signature on TV, Signature is also carried over to other products from LG, such as washing machines and fridges and other strange products. They showed a fridge, a Signature Edition fridge, with a 27-inch uh, screen oh, in yeah, it. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And there's no reason for that thing to exist. It's <laughs> just silly. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, like, so I, I watched a video of somebody interacting with it, and they're like, okay, so I'm going to go and look at the weather. They tap on it, and then they wait for, like, 10 yeah. seconds for the weather to open. It is the laggiest thing I've ever seen. Now, I think it is LG. I, I could be wrong, but I think it is LG that is using WebOS on their TVs as their smart TV interface. Isn't that adorable? It is kind of adorable. And, man, does WebOS ever look good? Super slow, but it looks great. <laughs> That, so, was, that was your first tablet, right? No, no. no? The Nexus okay. 7 was the first one. Oh, really? Okay. Wasn't it? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I have a lot of stuff. You know how it is. I have, still haven't found the Nexus 7. Really? It's been oh. months. That's weird. I don't know. So uh, LG also has um, uh, uh, just a bunch of stuff that they talked about, but they really only said anything about their TV, so you can go watch the keynote for mm-hmm. more. They claim it will cost less than $10,000. <laughs> That's a broad claim. Well, I'm sold. Okay, well, you know, if 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 anything, Samsung can sell you better. Mm. So Samsung is producing a new camera, or they're thinking about making a new camera, that will help you and anybody else with virtual reality headsets get more content. And it's a new Samsung-made 360-degree camera, but here's the problem. There's no price, and there's no availability, and uh, they said that this might not actually happen. Now, I also noticed in the, at least in the wording that you typed in here in the show notes, that it says that it will help producers make content for v- Gear VR. I so wouldn't be I'd, surprised I'd, if it was universal eventually. I, I hope so, because you otherwise upload, video is useless. You just upload it to Google. YouTube. YouTube and, Google yeah. YouTube. Have you have you ever watched any of the, the 360 degree Why videos would I on do YouTube? That? Because they're really cool. No, oh, it's a fad. I don't think so. I, don't I know think you so. don't. I, I, think it's, I think it's the future. You can't type I in VR. Found it. Can't code VR. Uh, Samsung has also made a 170-inch TV out of smaller individual panels. I would, like to, I would like to point out that it, that is three times the diagonal <laughs> length of my television. <laughs> and he has a nice TV. Uh, yes. So what's, what's amazing about this is each panel individually is 4K, and then there's an undisclosed number of panels composing this one big panel. But um, when you're far enough away from this panel, the lines are so small because they get so close together and the bezels are so minimal mm. that you can't tell unless you walk up to it and the screens are off. Because if they're emitting any light, you're just blinded by it. <laughs> and not only that, whatever controller they have, it's able to move them and remap them on demand. So hmm. if you were able, if you were moving panels in like a pattern for some reason, awful reason, <laughs> you could remap them to be whatever image you wanted in real time. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't even uh, have to necessarily have it in just a square or rectangular configuration. It could, you know, wrap around something. So it's a kind of a cool demo. Now we used to worry about like the screen door effect when you're getting too close mm-hmm. to to a screen where you can see the individual pixels and the black area between the pixels. Now we're worrying about whether we can see the black area between the televisions that we have put snug side by side. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's, that's how far we've come. And of course, this is just proof of concept, so it's never going to be implemented in reality. But yes. it's a cool idea. Well, you might see it uh, when you walk into like Best Buy uh, corporate. Kind of or, or you might see it when you walk into the Samsung booth at Best Buy. Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah. We go to corporate Best Buy, we know that they're 
carousel is going to be broken and saying Windows XP needs to update. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Sony, I mean uh, Samsung, has also made a Ultra 4K Blu-ray player available. Uh, uh, Ultra HD. Ultra HD. 4K. 4K Blu-ray player. So so awful these names. Yeah, why can't they just call it a 4K Blu-ray player? I don't know. Is it actually still Blu-ray or is it? I I I'm, it must not be just Blu-ray anymore though. It must be more dense, because otherwise, yeah, it would still be 1080p. Maybe I don't know. And uh, it's a bargain at 400 dollars. This is one product that you can actually pre-order and actually maybe buy. Really? Yeah. So go go What's and do it in CES then. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, you're right. It was actually announced last September, and they oh. just made it available for pre-order today. I mean, you know. Okay. Do they realize yet that physical media is dead? Well, I mean, maybe it's dead, but not in the United States because there's no there's there's just no internet here in America. Mm. But I mean, I can I can stream 4K from Netflix. I would like to see you stream Star Wars in 4K. I would like to see Star Wars on Netflix. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's see here. Uh, Sony has an update to tablets. Now, uh, the reason I put this in here is because how rare it is to see a tablet at CES these days. There are almost no tablets this year, and this one was one they decided to push forward. It's just a Tab Pro S, not the S Tab Pro, not the Pro Tab S. Uh, it's just a Windows tablet instead of a Android tablet. Oh, okay. And it has like a little keyboard dock if you want it, and uh, it's pretty nice. That was exciting, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay, Sony. What do you got? So Sony has revealed its new 4K uh, 20x zoom handycam for only $1,000. Yeah. Only? Only $1,000. Now, that is a great deal considering three years ago, that was $3,000. So in three years, you know, it's it's been a, it's a lot more accessible. And it also has 20x zoom. And it probably has a lot of other great features like optical image stabilization and all sorts of great stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted a dedicated video camera and not just like a prosumer or actual professional DSLR, this would be something you might get. You probably shouldn't be using a DSLR for video. Yeah, you could. You could. A lot of people but, do. Eh. In fact, most people do. I've had pretty bad experiences trying to use mine. Yeah, but I mean, me too. It's it's very grainy and it has to adjust the white balance a all lot. The time. Hey, so it's like Android. Sure. Yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. So uh, Sony also has a... And this is awful. A new lineup of headphones and speakers, and they're calling it high res audio, which is funny because it's like high resolution, but it's audio. Uh, high definition audio. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. And it's called H dot ear and H dot or H dot ear in and H dot ear go. I hate this already. Yeah, and, and they're not that exciting and I don't I don't even know. Finally we have a Sony made turntable. And it's uh so that's what you think it is. It's a turntable for records. I, there's a huge demand for that. I wish there wasn't. I mean, I wish Sony would just make a bloody mixer that I could buy, and that solve all my problems. Don't do they not make mixers? No. Oh. Okay. You know, if somebody made a USB three mixer, it would be in the studio right now. Regardless of price. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> if it's under five hundred dollars, or if it's just five hundred dollars. So uh, I also want to mention one more thing about Sony. They um Kazurai came up on stage and uh he he says they want to create objects of sensation <laughs> <laughs> and i thought that was so amusing because so i thought they were going to introduce something actually cool then right and they talked about these three things and that's it that's it oh wow yeah, oh right this was during the keynote they showed off a turntable during their keynote yeah how sad yeah and Objects of sensation, and this is the three things they could come up with, and it, it was that was kind of kind of not not that great. The thing that amuses me about that phrase is that later on, The Verge actually made a video yeah. about something completely separate. That's some sort of technology that like simulates foreplay. Yeah, it's the vibrator thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw that video. Yeah. And wasn't impressed. None of my students want to watch it. Eh, kids these days. So Qualcomm. And you know why they didn't want to watch it? Because it didn't have a Qualcomm product. So, <laughs> so Qualcomm wants to succeed, but can they? This, this is, is the question. The moment of truth. Let's find out. Qualcomm discussed the Snapdragon 820 at their keynote at length. They wanted to tell everybody that it's coming to phones near you very, very soon. 
So by Mobile World Congress in March, which I believe is in March, you should, everywhere you go, see a Snapdragon 820 near you. And that's the one that's in Spain? Yes, that okay. is Barcelona. Mm-hmm. So the Snapdragon 820, it's great. It's coming soon. It's coming with the new, somebody pronounced that, Crow, Cairo, Cry... Cry- oh, Cryo. Cryo. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. The new architecture. Cryo with a K, so maybe it doesn't mean temperature. <laughs> kind of a good joke either way. And so it's allegedly twice as fast as Crate. And that was pretty fast. Well, it was pretty fast three years ago. And has things really gotten that much faster? I wish. In phones? Yeah, like the uh, the iPhone chips, those are blazing fast. Mm. So fast, it's not even funny. And so this is a great step forward, but unfortunately, we're still too late. And by the time they're working on the A20, I mean, they're working on getting the A20 into like a Nexus phone, mm-hmm. we're already going to be like a month away from hearing about the 830 or whatever the next one's called uh, at CES next year. And uh, so here we are stuck again with old stuff in our Nexus. Every time. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a good move, but uh, that was like half of the presentation. And then the other half of the presentation was all about cars. That's a theme now. It is a theme now. Now, I thought they would have talked about the drone video that you showed me last week because they pre-released some drone info. Oh. They made a special, about it. special processor for drones. They didn't talk about it during the keynote, so I don't mm. know what happened to it. But what they talked about for cars are automotive variants of their chips. So just like NVIDIA... Qualcomm wants to make car-specific processors. So they're making the 602A, which is funny because it's a mid-range part by number, but they didn't say it was any less good than the 820A that they're also making. The 820A doesn't have connectivity, so it doesn't have a modem, no LTE, no mm. nothing. So if you're getting a lower-end car that didn't need a modem, I guess you could get an 820A. Sure. But I think you might want to prefer to instead pay the extra $10,000 to get the 820AM, which is funny because it really should have been called the FM. And the 820 AM... <laughs> I appreciated that joke. Good. The 820 AM is um, one, the one with the modem. It can do LTE up to some you know high number, and uh, it's super fast, or exactly as fast as the regular 820. Um, the problem in general with this, though, is that, again, they're talking about how the hardware is revolutionary and super-duper great, and all their demos, though, show cool software Mm -hmm. and somebody has to go in and and, and place a gigantic order for these and actually make cars with them but they also can't charge way too much for the cars or nobody will have it yeah i don't you look forward to the days when the consumers who are going and buying cars have to worry about not only how does it feel in the car how does it drive what's the gas mileage yeah what um how many people does it fit but also do i want the one that has lte or just the regular 820 and you know now so we're adding a whole nother layer do do i want the lunchbox processor or do i want the handheld processor (laughs) you need the lunchbox don't kid yourself don't sell yourself short the biggest lunchbox you can find uh, you don't you have a truck liquid cool it and shove it in the trunk of your car. That's where it's. That's where they're supposed to put it. Yeah. So that that's fine for you. You have a truck. I I don't. I have a little Jeep, and that thing can't hold a lunchbox. I mean, it's it's too small. Yes. So I wonder what's running the smart cars for Cartico. That's a good point. Yeah. I wonder what chip they got. So hey, who's gonna be able to bring home a 170 inch TV? You couldn't get your 50 inch TV. Well, but it comes in separate panels. Assembly is going to be a well. Wow, that's going to be a pain to put it in order, right? <laughs> yeah, well, well, if you're it doesn't if matter. You're rich though, enough to to because, buy this thing in the first place. You're rich enough to just buy a bunch of people to go and put oh, it together buy a for bunch you. Of people, huh? Buy a bunch of people's labor. <laughs> oh, labor. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. Save. So, so you're capitalist now. <laughs> yes. Wait. What? Well, okay. Whatever. Anyway, so um, so about that 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 thing though, they uh, the reason that doesn't matter for installing it, it won't be hard is because the controller can re-display the picture at any time. So it's intelligent to know what order it's in when it's plugged in. Okay. So I don't know if what it's doing to do that, but that's what they said. Um, Watch the wall mount so they all, more than a TV. <laughs> probably. So they also said these 820 AM chips can be um, hot-swapped anytime in the future. So when they come out with future automotive variants, hmm. you can take the little tray out with the chip in it and slide a new tray with the new chip in. And you know people are still going to be nervous about doing that. Uh, I mean, you know it's going to be NSA'd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we finally have the Intel, and I expected, you know, to hear some, you know, 
t- discussion about the 6000 Intel series, you know, low powered or high powered, you know, an enthusiast line mm-hmm. or something, anything. But of course, what do I know? It's coming at Comdex and not now. Instead, we just got nothing. Instead, we got wearables and it's the Intel Curie chip. It was allegedly announced last year at CES and is now coming out in Q1 sometime. It's only going to cost $10 per chip, and uh, that's good, but I don't know what it's for, because it's a wearable chip, and I don't know what it's for. Me neither. But, yeah. But, you know, they have to be in the market, otherwise they're losing automatically. Like, they, they, they had their entire presentation, and they had people dump, jump around, run around, on bikes, just on stage, showing off how this chip could change your life somehow. What an amazing culture we live in. I I just I don't even understand. So, um based on the keynotes here that we covered, what 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 would you say? Uh successful or failure? Meh. Yeah. Huge success. Okay. So, let's talk about some notable topics. I I think there was just too much cars. I don't care about really? cars. Really? You think I there was a lot of cars? There was a lot of. That seems to be the theme for this year. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mhm. It's going to be great when we can shut you down from a ways. I love being a marshal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So notable topics. Let's let's begin with the um, headline news for Notable, which would be the Oculus. Yes, tell so me the, about it. The Oculus Rift is a product that was, I, I believe, it was first showed off at CES a few years ago, and it uh, is finally coming out for real for the consumers, for you and I to purchase. Not just well, I guess you're a developer, I'm a developer, but you know, for real people, it's coming out in March for six hundred dollars. Woohoo! Now, are you getting one? Probably yes. Probably. You, well, you sure. I don't have time to play games anymore. But mm. yes, maybe I got to watch those YouTube videos in VR. So, uh if you haven't been following the internet for the past week, you might not have heard the outrage or p- a pretend outrage from thousands of people saying, "It's not $350 like you said. What's the deal?" And uh, apparently, some guy told everybody that it was going to be three fifty a year or two ago, and it wasn't. It was six hundred dollars, and everybody's so angry. Oh, I do vaguely remember that. So, yes. so do we feel like that's expensive, or is that fair game? It's. I feel like it's fair game. Yeah. Is it fair game? Yes. Why? Because they can do whatever they want because they're first at it. Yeah, but I mean, is it, is it fair game for people to actually use it and buy it? Like, is it a good price? That's what. Oh, I mean. that's what well, you mean. people okay. spend six hundred dollars to get the PlayStation with the controllers and everything else. A PS three was six hundred dollars at launch, probably close enough. So yeah, a few accessories and stuff. It's right up there. However, that was a full console. You could actually play the bloody thing. This, however, also requires you to have a uh, three thousand dollar computer. No, not uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Ish. As somebody who bought a six hundred dollar monitor a few years ago, uh, yeah, this is fine. But but for me, you know, like that has so much more utility. Like a monitor, you can actually do things with. For example, you could code with it. I mean, you're not going to be using Photoshop in your Oculus Rift. I mean, what's the point? Why not? Because it's going to suck. What if I want to edit my photospheres? I'd like to see you try. Me too. I would love. <laughs> Do, does Photoshop even support that kind of thing? I, know, I no, don't know. No not way. yet. You know, but maybe they'll make. Maybe Adobe will make a new a new uh, application. You know, like yeah, some, mm-hmm. some three D thing. But I mean, it's it's an entirely new area. It's an entirely new way to experience media. So I I don't think that six hundred dollars is uh too high a price for for that. I just I I think it's sort of high for. For the uncertainty it has going forward, like there's no products for it, there's no content, there's no free realm, like there's no there's no browser on it. You can't go to uh, Oculus dot com slash Rift and actually find something useful to do. There's there's just nothing there. Well, so so even if they don't, even if there aren't tons of games coming out that are built specifically for Oculus, uh, you can still just play your regular games with the Oculus on and hope and... you don't have bleeding eyes. Sure, but that's something that... Because most what? games aren't made for Oculus usage. Right. Yeah. So it's going to look awful. Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, as long as it's 3D, it should work just fine. 3D. It just needs to map your head movement to yeah. the camera movement. I don't know. I just don't think it's going to work out. This, this is simulating my head moving, Ryan. I know, I know. I understand. So uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Remix OS. 
No, this was a pretty good one. If you, if you're bored, you should look at those pictures because they're they're pretty impressive. So it's giving you a full desktop like experience, very reminiscent to like a like a Linux distro, but it's based on Android instead of Chrome OS. So that means it actually has apps. In other words, it's kind of like what we want to happen to Android and Chrome OS. I mean, you know, it's an operating system. You have folders and files. But you also have all the greatness of Android and all the apps it brings. And it's uh, pretty nice. It looks pretty good. It has real multitasking, as far as we can tell. So wait, so what form factor is this meant for? I assume it's meant for, you know, uh, um, transformables. What do you call those okay. things? I would call them transformables. That's a good word for it. Wow. Okay, then. I don't or, think that's a real hy- name. hybrids. Hybrid, or, maybe. Uh, yeah. The things that change. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So it looks really nice. I don't know what the, um, like, how to get it or what it's coming for. But uh, they, they're showing it off here, and it looks great. Um, they, they're saying Intel or AMD-based products can have it right now. So just go get it, install it, and, and there you go. Play around. Android. Cool. Maybe I'll put it on one of the Raspberry Pis that we've got at school now. Because it looks like you can... I mean, presumably it's not shipping with the Play Store by default, because that would be against the agreements. But mm-hmm. you probably decide load the Play Store and then install all of your regular Google apps right in. Sure. Yeah. So that's cool. Let's see. We have TP-Link. Uh, you don't hear much from a router company, but they have this monstrosity. Look at this thing. Do you see this thing? I'm loading it. It's Whoa. beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it is. It, ha- it has enough antennas on it. I think it does really have enough antennas. This is this is like 2001 A Space Odyssey times eight. <laughs> so how many antennas? Eight. Okay, just making sure you counted, right? So this thing is um, pretty impressive, and it has enough antennas to kill a person. And here's why. It is the first implementer of Wi-Fi 802.11 AD. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it's after death. I agree. Okay, no, no. So AD is the new non-related to AC protocol. So Wi-Fi AC is the one that can go far and give you normal speeds. And, okay. you know, it's a normal Wi-Fi. This is made for local area things. So they say attenuation happens as soon as thickness of paper blocks it. So it's basically useless for most things. But if there is nothing blocking it from whatever device can implement AD, allegedly you can get gigabit throughput. So what's the point of having it wireless if I have to be line of sight within two feet of it? That's a great question. I don't know. Does it go backwards compatible? Though? Yes, it is. So it is, is fully is it backwards. An N? Uh, it is all the way up to AC, and it's not only that; it's four by four. So four devices could use it at once at full throughput without any degradation of speed. And then, if you did have more devices, the, they would be separated onto their own chips and. AP. So I assume you're getting one. No, I'm not getting one yet. Uh, Yours is dying. It is dying. My my um, 2.4 gigahertz chip is dying under the crushing weight of 20 Chromecasts. <laughs> yes, but it's only 250 bucks, and that's that's, that's what you paid for your last. It's, it's, it, it is pretty 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 good pretty good uh, pricing, I guess. Um, you know, I would have to see what the the protocol, not the protocol, the pan, control panel looks like, but it, it's pretty cool. You know, the problem with using ad on this thing and the fact that it, its signal dies when there's thickness of paper in between mm-hmm. is that the physical design of this router makes me want to like hang little ornaments from <laughs> from the different antennas <laughs> and make it into you a, do it a nice shrine well you know i love having shrines yeah. you know well so i guess what i would have to say is so this is cool because you know even if you didn't get the ad component of it even if you just got it for its regular wi-fi right. usage it's 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 a great product. It is it looks like anyway because it's four by four. It's it's fully quadplexed that way. But I guess the real question is, if you did want it for the AD product, what device uses AD? Like this is the server part of the AD. Where's the client? What is it? So it's in the same space as uh, USB Type C right now. It's I think it's almost almost worse than that. It is. Yeah. Because paper. Can you can push through paper with USB Type C? <laughs> you can't do that with AD. The world's going paperless, though. The world is going paperless. However, I'm thicker than a slice of paper, so you need to diet. I know, I know. So let's see here. Um, Android Auto. What a thing. Uh, you know, we don't hear much about Android Auto because it's sort of one of those things Android uh, or Google sort of forgets about. You only hear about it if you listen to the Material podcast. 
and even when you listen to the material podcast, they kind of just say, no, nah, Android Auto. Uh, so, um, this, this guy who makes really good reviews, he, um, found some Ford guy to give him a tour of a car. Uh, they talk about Android Auto. <sighs> you know how hard it is to market this thing? Pretty hard. I think it's extremely hard to market this. When you watch the guy touch buttons on his car display, it's slow. It's not fluid. It's not even necessarily intuitive. You know, the buttons are big, but they're kind of just, it's not compelling. Everything mm. you can do with it, you could do with a phone. The only advantage is maybe you would have a map of wherever you're going to that's big enough to actually see. Mm -hmm. But that's not even a real concern. I do conceptually like Android Auto better than like most of the other auto operating system solutions. So, because, CarPlay? Because... Well, who else is there? Yeah, I don't. There, Tesla's proprietary one. Microsoft Sync was a thing for a while. Oh well, this is Sync awful. three. What? This is Sync three. I'm confused. Yeah, so Sync used to be just Microsoft, but Ford now has adopted not only Microsoft technology but also uh, this as a part of their Sync three platform. Meaning that it does Microsoft, Google, and Apple. No, I think they're just trying to call whatever they use incidentally as Sync. Okay. So they didn't whatever. tell people. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I the, know what you mean. Yeah. The, the fact that it doesn't worry about you having LTE in the car, it right. just runs through the phone. Right. It updates itself, you know, based on you know you can you you download updates for the operating system of the car. On your phone, and then right. when the next time they're hooked up, it transfers. You know, all you know, that stuff. It, it's a great idea in theory, but I think they're there. So, how much does this add extra to the car then? I have no idea. So, I wouldn't be surprised if you have to buy a model up at least to get this in your car, mm. and it would have to be a new car anyway. So, it's not cheap. No, and I think that's one of the major problems here. This kind of stuff needs to be so cheap to be pervasive, and otherwise, it's so hard to market it and to get some traction. Mm -hmm. Which is funny, because cars. <laughs> uh, so Griffin uh, is not a company you hear much about, because they make awful things. But I thought this was kind of cool. It's a MagSafe connector for the MacBook One, which does not have MagSafe. Oh. So the MacBook oh. One has a USB Type-C charger port. So that's oh, how you that charge MacBook. it. Oh, that MacBook. Okay, yeah. So the, the reason this is kind of cool is you put this thing into the MagSafe port, it sticks in there somehow, probably with a super powerful magnet, and then a weaker magnet allows the cable end to detach if it's pulled, like a regular MagSafe. Hmm. This reminds me of a Kickstarter that um, Brian Mitchell and I backed um, called Znaps or Znaps or something like that, where it originally it was for Lightning and micro USB, mm -hmm. where it, it introduces the MagSafe like. Um, connector and then once usb c became a thing they were like oh hey yeah like we'll, we'll add that as some some um push goals or whatever yeah, yeah. and so i think there's going to be yeah, multiple companies doing this type of thing so we always wondered back in the day so why isn't everybody why aren't all the major pc vendors making make safe like things and presumably it was because of patents. Patents were blocking mm. other vendors' ability to make that MagSafe port. I mean, it is wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. So wonderful, I'll seize it. Mm. Right. You do I that. have it come out on me too much. Like really? when I so I I charge the MacBook overnight. Mm -hmm. You know when I'm because not using it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And even then, like, so I plug it in and then I go to put it down on the table. I'm like, oh crap! It came out while I was moving it from my hand mm -hmm. to the table. You know, it's funny you say that. That's exactly what everybody else says about Type C or uh, MakeSafe Two. It's a known problem with MakeSafe Two. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I have. I know MakeSafe Make One does not have that issue. Ah. MakeSafe One is the the real MakeSafe. <laughs> You're very adamant about this. <laughs> I am very adamant about what's better. <laughs> so LG also had a uh, big TV and it is a gigantic 98 inch TV maybe it's a little bit easier for you to carry but more importantly it's an 8K display wow mm. so you probably can't buy this because it's proof of concept but uh, if you could buy it it would probably cost $133,000 you also wouldn't even be able to get an ultra HD 4K Blu-ray player for it no because it'd have to upscale yeah it Gross. should probably look fine. You wouldn't even notice. Yeah, no. But it, it, it's it's kind of cool if you think about it. So what resolution would 8K be? Does anybody know? I don't even know off the top of my head what 4K is. Okay, It's like 
three something something. Yeah, that's all you need to know. By something something something. Yeah, so you got it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I think I do know. 20, 21 something or other? Yeah, yeah. Cause, it's uh, like 34 by 21 I or see something. it on YouTube. Yeah. It's not it's not as weird or big as you might expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess it's kind of cool. Okay, moving on. Um, LG also showed off some cool bendable screens. They had this this roll-up uh, screen that, that I was very, very interested in uh, because I don't know what exactly the applications will be for this, but... It you know it's it's the sci-fi ideal of you've got this this paper material that you can fold up and roll up and put in your backpack and whatever and then you know you unroll it and whoa it's a screen it's a map that moves and it, yeah and I'm sure that we won't be using it for that exactly because that's kind of stupid when you think about it why would I you know why wouldn't I just want a hologram but exactly there, but there might be some other application for a bendable screen. So when I think about it, I guess it, for me it comes back to like maybe it's not bendable like you bend it intentionally, but it's pliable. So mm-hmm. instead of making a um a, a piece of glass have to be curved, you just take this thing and you just glue it to the side of your fridge. Mm-hmm. So your fridge can be curved, but you don't have to have a curved piece of glass in your fridge. And if your screen breaks, you can just unglue it and take it off and glue the next one on. Because they would have to be cheap too. Yeah. I hope. Um, I guess I, I what I didn't hear about it is does does it, is there any indication that it could handle like touch input? You know, I'm not sure. Uh, they, I think that would be like the best mix. Yeah, I I don't think so. They didn't show that off because the the people who are seeing it, the journalists, they didn't actually get to touch. Of course the, not. The screen. Yeah. It, they had they had a an LG like engineer yep. there with some plastic gloves on rubber gloves on yep. and he, rolling it up uh, very carefully and unrolling it yeah because they didn't want to break it no of course yeah that's what they always do i remember at various ces's when they had things under glass cases so you couldn't mm-hmm. do anything to them so they only have three models three you know three prototypes that's yeah it. yeah exactly that's all you need that's the entire month's budget so uh panasonic also has a cool thing so you you've seen MKBHD's videos about the RX one thousand or one hundred from Sony. Yes. So that's the yes. really nice, compact, super fancy camera that he mm-hmm. loves to talk about. Mm-hmm. I think the Mark III is out right now, and um, maybe even the four. I don't know. So Lumix has made a uh, or Panasonic made a Lumix camera. Um, follow suit to that, but it's just cheaper. So it, it's very comparable. It has 4K video. It looks exactly like it, it. It looks almost identical to it, except it says Lumix on the top instead of Sony. Um, and, and as you know, everybody here loves Lumix cameras. Yes. Do we? Well, I do. I have one. Oh, cool. Yeah. Not as fancy as this, but but pretty cool. Um, You'll be upgrading into this one. No, I probably won't. I, I, I got us kind of a side grade instead. But uh, so this this is going for a cheaper price than the Sony ver- version. This is only six ninety nine, so that's that's a good price by a little bit. Um, some other differences is that this has uh, 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 like a, a smaller aperture, okay, or something, mm-hmm. and it also doesn't have a fancy screen in the back that can swivel. That can flip around, okay. Ooh, okay. That's all I can say. You to have that. no idea though how many times I wish that my DSLR had a flippable oh, screen. Let me tell you, I know. I know. So, um, want to talk about something you might like to know, Patton Marshall? It's classified. It's classified? Are you sure you can't tell me about it? Okay, I'll give you the inside scoop. Okay, thank you. We had multiple objectives today. First of, first and foremost, we heard Edward Snowden was going to be here. I needed him. I'd get promoted if I got him. Didn't get him. Regardless, we're also so here. So you would have been a general? I would have been the general. General Marshall, Marshall General. Yes, and I'd also sell car insurance on the side. <laughs> yes, but we are also looking for some Chinese companies. We can't disclose it, also because I don't know it. Well, here, Wasn't let me... in the memo. Can I, can I, can I try to tell you? You try it's, to tell it's, me it's my business. It's Chang Zhao First International Trade Company. How'd you get the classified material? I um, hacked into your database. Well, you are the hacker. That's what I hear. Either we just had to take a few of these boards... What kind of boards? Well, allegedly they're hoverboards, but they got a big tire in them, and then they don't really hover. <laughs> well, as you always said, they balance. As you always said in high school, Mr. Marshall, not touching. 
it's really close, now touching. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get me out of a lot of trouble. Yeah, that that's what they always say, right? Yeah, so uh, apparently there was a, a suit or uh, some kind of uh, dispute brought forth by Future Motion, which was an American company. And I guess they decided to bring the suit, coincidentally, at the very same moment CES was running to ruin their competitor's life. Now, the the products look pretty copied. Like, that's not a surprise. Mm-hmm. So it is a legitimate suit. But how, how unusual it is for a seven-minute convening of a judge and a party and then to get an immediate injunction and restraining order and wow. immediate removal of all products from ces from, from everywhere no no more selling gone huh. out and it's so unusual and it's very impressive that they were able to do this and these ones weren't even the safety hazard right the other hoverboards the ones we should have been getting so i i, I guess i haven't read too much into it other than that but um it's pretty pretty impressive, and I, I guess when you think about all the products that happen at CES, it's almost amazing you don't hear about this more. Mm. I mean, how often do you think that it happens? Two Chinese vendors come to CES like, oh my gosh, we managed to get in, and they just happen to have made the same thing. And then some American company booth down, oh, we totally did that before you, like a week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it happens a lot. Well, yeah, because they're going to CES to find people to sell this thing to, you know, pe- people to incorporate this new technology that they made into your products, you know, right. kind of thing. So, of course, you're going to be showing off stuff that nobody else has seen you do before. Or so you're gonna, it does. You you might bump up into people who are also doing the exact same right. thing that haven't been told, telling you. Yeah. I guess I'm just impressed with the efficiency they executed the, the orders with. <laughs> Mr. Marshall. Uh, it's fine. Mm-hmm. So I watched a video uh, about a self-piloting single-person aircraft, which uh, I thought was the coolest thing in the world. When I, As soon as I saw that, I was like, forget about self-driving cars. I want one of those. Of course, you can't legally fly it in the U.S. So even at CES, they weren't allowed to demonstrate its flying capability. So it was just sitting there on the show floor. But that's that's the... That's the future. Not fleets of self-driven cars driving around on roads. Yeah. But fleets of self-piloting drones that carry people. I mean, putting down a road is a big project. In America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why bother repairing a crumbling infrastructure if you don't even have to upkeep it? You don't. We just bypass it. We did. Did we? No, no. Yeah, I didn't think so. No. You know, self-driving cars still won't solve that issue. Yep. Yeah. No, but I mean, we're talking about flying ones. Well, so so now, you, but your flying car or flying what is it? I guess it's a drone, technically. Uh, okay. Well, you're flying it's a very very large drone. <laughs> your flying drone car is it going to be able to support a lunchbox size computer in it? <laughs> that sounds like a, a large weight concern, actually. Yeah, I think so. Especially all that water. Water's heavy. It is, especially when it's being superheated mm-hmm. by a Pascal architecture chip. Well, by the time that thing becomes legal, we'll have something else to worry about. Yes, um, not Pascal. So uh, I think there's something about fingernails. Yeah, there. Was, I don't know where at the show this was, but they were showing off a, a like printer for for fingernail paint that can put whatever image you you give it on onto a fingernail, and they had some like close up videos of of the images that it was printing on there and they look pretty pretty yeah, high they, pretty they, high they, they look good mm-hmm. yeah uh i don't know i guess that they're, they're, a lot of people could use that you know it'd be a good thing for a party or something mm-hmm. yeah i yep. could see i could see that actually being a thing it's one of those as seen on tv kind of things though you know yeah 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 um so let's talk about ces in general now uh how was this year compared to other years well, I think I paid more attention to this year somehow than other years. Yeah, I think I was Just... involved. <laughs> Turns out I have that effect. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of refreshing to not just see 4K televisions, but I also wasn't excited that the thing that we were seeing instead was cars. Cars, or, cars, cars. Or, or something about cars, but not yeah. actually cars. Chip, chips that are going to go in cars. And and prototypes of cars and theoretical self-driving cars. And flying cars. But but not mm-hmm. enough real things. Yeah. What do you think, Matt? <sighs> Classified. Yeah. The next year, big plans. So Hopefully I, Snowden comes in person. 
Yeah, I don't think so. So for for me, CES for the for, for the first year, you know, it was all, all about the OLED or the OLED LED. Oh yeah. And for the second year after that, it was sort of a, a mixed bag. Um, in, in fourteen, it was it was fairly diverse. Uh, but I feel like that was my first year of I've seen it all before. And mm. then in two thousand fifteen, we didn't do a show, mm-hmm. and I know why I didn't do a show because nothing happened. It was all TVs. I know you, we stopped and talked. Uh, yeah, we talked about it, yeah. but we didn't do a show. And there's just nothing to talk about. There was talk nothing about a spoon counter. How many bites of food you took, and right. all these other and terrible things. I remember. I don't know which year this was, but I, it might as well have been last year. Um, somebody made a cane that allowed you to track your elderly grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you know, there's there's so many things at CES that are gimmicky like that, and it's such a struggle to weed out all of those awful things for something interesting every time i do this we watched a 45 minute promotional video for it the cane i don't know if it was that long but it felt like a long time felt like a lifetime fortunately i don't need to have a cane to track my dad i just need to give him a moto g and then turn on google plus there you go well so i did the same thing to my grandmother actually i gave her my old nexus 5 and i i've tracked her staying in her bedroom for the last six months so oh well Uh oh oh I wish she had moved around a bit more, but I guess not. So I guess this CES was fairly decent. Not the best, not the worst. Um, this time, you know, no no Samsung had... A, no, there was no unpacked event. HTC really didn't make a big, um, big show. Mm-hmm. Phones have seemed to have quieted down. Nobody really cares about those anymore. Tablets are gone. Nobody makes tablets anymore. Laptops are fairly run-of-the-mill. Like, you might get a refresh... But that's it's nothing to write home about. Uh, TVs you can't buy because they're all more than ten thousand dollars or just under. Mm-hmm. So there's the, the the consumer electronics show is really not even about consumers at this point. No, no, it's just an electronics show. Yeah, and and only vaguely at that. Yeah, and mo- so when we were watching it, uh, the tech club at, at Harding, mm-hmm. even the you know these enthusiastic young kids, they were watching most of these and going. Why the heck would I want that? And we're like openly laughing at the products that we were seeing on mm-hmm. display. Like, yep. what on earth? You know, I, fridges. I think, right, exactly. And it's and it's so easy to laugh at these things when they obviously cost twice or three times as much as a normal thing would cost, and there's no re- gainful benefit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. or things that are completely unusable. So I know you guys don't like talking about guns, but they did make locks for trigger guards. Yeah, I think I did hear about that. So. Did you know that a gun is only useful if you have it with you at all times? Uh, sounds like my my philosophy on phones. Yes. And if you if it's so big that you can only use your phone at home, you won't take it with you. And so they make these huge cable locks that weigh more than the gun that you're supposed to keep on you at all times so only you can use your gun. I feel like that's not usable. It's not. It's completely unusable. I don't know why they're marketing it. Like it's going to save children. I mean, at least they don't market phones like that. Yes. <laughs> you buy the phone, but it has to come with a security thing that you see on it at Best Buy. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, yeah exactly like yeah. that. And you have to unlock it and restrap it every time. Mm-hmm. It's an yeah. ultimate lock screen. But uh, no, we'll see what comes at next CES. So, so after this, this is, of course, the first consumer electronics show of the year. We've got tons more. So this is CES 2016. We've got Mobile World Congress coming up in March, I believe. I would check, but I don't care. Uh, we'll probably talk about that. And then, of course, after Mobile World Congress, we also have Comdex, which is where uh, Intel likes to talk about hardware. It's more of a you know vendory kind of conference for um, Intel and you know other other things. And of course, between all of that, so that's between now and when all of the big summertime Google I/O and Apple and E3 and all that crap. Between all of that, we also have the launch of the Galaxy S7, whatever HTC decides to make, uh, and all the other major phone vendors. HTC is going to have to turn it around. Uh, I think they're going to turn it around into closing. Mm. That, that's the end. February 22nd for Mobile World Congress. Oh, okay. So that's pretty close. Mark it. Okay, great. So I think uh, that's coming. How about you got a Comdex date? Uh, whose date? Comdex. Uh, didn't work. <laughs> didn't work. Come decks. Okay, so we've got a packed season. You might even say it's unpacked. 
So, where can we find you on the internet? Well, I'm Ian R. Buck, and you can find me pretty much everywhere as Ian R. Buck, especially on Twitter. And uh, check me out on Medium. I like writing. What an unusual thing to say. Check me out on Medium. Not large? Not no, small, no. Just Medium? Do they know how to find you on Medium? Y- Ian R. Buck. Like it's medium.com slash... At Ian R. Buck. Oh, man, that's yeah. weird. Or you Where could can we just... find you? Oh, you can find me just about anywhere, especially on the Twitter at Matt underscore Petchel. <laughs> Is that right? I don't know. It's a bunch of crap. I'm nowhere. I'm not worth finding. What about uh, Dream Guy? He didn't renew. <laughs> he did not renew. He, his domains were not renewed. I wonder if the domain Marshall Marshall is available. Uh, Marshall.me is my... Oh, <laughs> is that right? Uh, hover. <laughs> don't use Hover. What? Who do you use? Don't use Hover. You can look... Vacuum you can... Okay. I would like to report he typed in Hoover and got <laughs> vacuum cleaners. <laughs> And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially at Ryan Amar on the Twitter. And of course, everywhere else where I post everything else. You can also find war games and other such things on my GitHub. And of course, you can look forward to all sorts of great podcasts here on the Nexus, like episode 17 of PodKit, which will be coming out very soon. Has it already been recorded? Yes. Yes, it has. Okay, that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Anyway, have a good one.